Welcome back. We've got another video today. We're talking about the complications that can come from diabetes. So give us an overview. What kind of complications are there? So when we talk about diabetes complications, uh, we generally classify them as microvascular, meaning that they affect the small blood vessels, or macrovascular, so they affect the bigger blood vessels in your body. Under microvascular complications, we worry about um, damage to the blood vessels of the eye, and that's called retinopathy. Damage to the blood vessels in the kidneys, which creates nephropathy, and damage to the blood vessels of the small nerve fibers in your, your extremities, so like your toes, for example, and that's called neuropathy. One more time, so I can say all these words. Retinopathy mm -hmm. for the eyes, Yeah. nephropathy for the kidneys, and neuropathy for the nerves. And so what are some of the uh, macro problems? So, so for macrovascular uh, damage that can arise from diabetes, that's the bigger blood vessels in your body. So the blood vessels that um, are in your brain, and when those get damaged, that can cause strokes. And the blood vessels that run along your heart, and when those get damaged, that can cause heart disease and heart attacks. What are some of the ways that we can prevent some of these uh, complications? In terms of keeping the blood sugars within a good range, there has been some very good studies that have shown that when we keep the A1C at 7% or less, we can significantly reduce the damage to those small blood vessels of the eyes, kidneys, and nerves, okay? Um, so good glycemic control is um, of paramount importance at preventing those, co those microvascular complications. We also have some long-term data that shows that in over many, many years, um, good glycemic control can also prevent the macrovascular complications, so reduce the incidence of strokes and heart attacks. But the data is more robust for preventing the microvascular complications. So many years, these are very long-term sort of plans you'd have to further down the road avoid these complications. Yeah, so the macrovascular complications, we start to see a benefit after 15 to 25 years of good glycemic control, whereas the microvascular complications we can see within the first um, eight to 10 years. Really, so you really have to start thinking long-term. If you're feeling good right now, you still have those uh, 20 year goals of, of keeping that healthy, keeping those complications away. Exactly, because diabetes is a chronic disease, and so you need to take care of yourself for the future. Absolutely. Um, and for A1C, just to clarify, when you're measuring your A1C, what exactly are you measuring? So an A1C is a blood test that's done uh, once every three months, mm -hmm. and it represents what your blood sugars have been on average over that entire three month period. So we've mentioned some studies about A1C. What's some of the data that we've found in those studies? That's a very good question. So uh, maybe we'll look at the slides. Okay, we've got some actual data from yeah. these. Okay, so what are we seeing here? So the first trial that um, we'll look at is called the DCCT, looking at preventing complications in patients with newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes. So at the onset of the trial, patients were split into one of two groups. Um, the first group was treated by conventional standards at the time, which resulted in an average A1C of about 9% um, over a span of seven years. The second group was randomized to what was called tight glycemic control, where the goal was to get the A1C down to 6%, but over the trial, it ended up being around 7%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a difference of 2% in A1C over the course of the trial, which is quite substantial. And so what was found in this study is that the patients who were treated to that tighter glycemic target ended up having about 50% less um, eye damage, which we call retinopathy. They had 30% less kidney disease as measured by protein excretion in their urine and they had 70% less nerve damage, and overall, all of those findings were quite significant. And that's just from 2% decrease from 9 to 7 in the A1C? Yeah, and when these patients were followed prospectively for the next 15, 20 years, those benefits of that early good control were maintained. 
A similar study was done with type 2 diabetics, and that was called the UKPDS trial. So in UKPDS, when the investigators looked at the difference in all microvascular complications together, so retinopathy, nephropathy, and neuropathy together, patients who achieved better glycemic control had a 25% lower rate of those bad outcomes. And in the UKPDS trial, it wasn't even a 2% difference in A1C, it was only a 0.9% difference in A1C. So the tight glycemic control group had an A1C of 7%, and the less tight control had 7.9%. And even that 1% difference um, showed a significant benefit. Not only that, but the patients who achieved an A1C of 7% in the UKPDS trial were 10% less likely to die from diabetes-related complications. So I think the summary from this video that you should take away is that when your diabetes health professional talks to you about A1C and they get really focused on trying to get you down to an A1C of 7, the reason they're really emphasizing that is because they want to prevent those complications of the eye disease, nerve disease, and kidney damage from happening in your lifetime. So when you hear A1C, you should tune back into what your uh, doctor's saying. Yeah, so A1C goals is to prevent complications. Okay, I think we can all uh, agree on that. Well, thanks for being with us, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.